Hello, I'm not Chuck. When I was in Victoria, Texas a couple of weeks ago, uh, it was the first time I tried to use my exhaust fan in the bathroom and I had some trouble with it. I managed to turn it on, as you can see now and probably here, it is on and running and uh, this green light is on, which is, I think, an indication that it is running. But all of the controls are sort of messed up. They don't do what they're supposed to do. For example, I don't seem to be able to turn the fan off by pushing the on and off button. Uh, of course, I should be able to do that. Uh, I can change the direction, I think. Yeah, that's the button that's doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, it was exhausting air and now it's pulling air in from the outside. These buttons are also supposed to adjust the speed and they sort of work, but not exactly. So I've called Max Air, the company that makes the Max Air fans, and talked to their tech support. And what they've told me is that there is a control board, I believe it's behind this panel, or maybe it's over here, I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, there's a control board on there, and it has a, in my opinion, this is my opinion, not theirs, a design flaw that allows it when the input voltage gets a little bit high, the fan controls cease to function like they're supposed to, and the whole control board has to be replaced. Well, I don't like that very much, but if I want my fan to work, I guess I just have to accept it and move on. Now, what I have to do is I have to turn these four little things here one way or the other, I guess that way, and uh, take the screen off the fan. Okay, so there's the screen out of the way was pretty dirty, wasn't it? And for some reason, that seems to have slowed the fan down. I have no idea why. And then I'll have to remove these four screws and pull this portion of the fan out. I also have to take that knob off. And then I'll be able to see the control board. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take this knob off, take those four screws out, First of all, I'm going to disconnect the power uh, and then do what I just said. So, uh, but I can't do that and hold the light and film the thing while I take it down. So I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to shut the camera off, um, do those things. And then when I have that done, I'll start filming again. Well, as you can see, I have the screws removed that hold the bottom cover on and I have the knob off so now this piece will come down and we can see the control board that I spoke of right there so and I have disconnected the power I turned off the main breakers uh, to the trailer so there's no electricity anywhere in the trailer now uh, no DC flowing up here whatsoever so now I have to uh, Oh, I see the connector there. You see the connector right there that has to be disconnected. Well, that goes to the fan motor. But that still has to be disconnected. And these wires that feed power into the control board also have to be disconnected. So I'm going to shut the camera off and use two hands to figure out what I need to do there. And when I have that part done, I'll turn the camera back on and show you what I've done. As it turns out, I couldn't get the uh, wires that provide power from the converter in the trailer uh, to the motor, these wires. I couldn't get them out without removing this interior trim ring. That only took four screws, and it sure did make it easier to get two things. Probably uh, would have been a good idea to do that in the first place. But anyway, now I have that down. I need to uh, cut 
the little tie wraps so I can unplug this connector and then probably what I'll do is just go ahead and cut these two wires. They are the wires that um, go back to the AC to DC converter that's in the travel trailer. I'm just going to cut those and then when I get ready to put this assembly back in then I'll just uh, go ahead and use some butt splices to uh, reconnect the new wires instead of uh, trying to uh, fool around and spend time disconnecting these. I'm just going to uh, cut them in two and then I'll uh, re-splice them when I get the new control board in place. Well as you can see I've gotten this piece down the uh, control board is uh, here I unplugged this connector which goes uh, to a mating connector which provides power directly to the fan motor uh, just pull those two apart um, I still have to disconnect these wires and I think contrary to what I told you earlier what I'm going to do is just snip them right there that way I won't have any question about which wire goes to which wire I'll know that the positive goes to the gray and the uh, white goes to the white which is uh, ground in the trailer I'm sorry for moving my head around so much that's where the camera is as I guess you have figured out now in order to remove this board I'll have to take this little connector right there out but I'm going to take that inside do the rest of the, the disassembly of this and the reassembly as much of it as I can inside the house instead of doing it here in the travel trailer okay now that I have the assembly in the house where I have some decent lighting uh, you can see this is the pair of wires that go to the connector that made up with another connector that goes directly to the fan motor uh, this is the uh, little connector I told you that had to be removed I've already loosened it up so I just need to pull that out of the way and I'll show you where that goes in just a minute then these are the wires that uh, actually provide power from the DC to DC converter they're the two that you saw me snip into uh, just a few minutes ago and as a matter of fact the new board has powers just as long as these so I'll have plenty of wire and uh, some left over besides there's one more wire that you see that's right there and as it turns out that wire goes over to here and that is the sensor that senses the temperature the fan has a facility to uh, when it's properly set to turn itself on and off based on the temperature um, in the trailer and that sensor which is actually a device called a thermistor is um, glued in right there and there's a hole in the other side of this plastic piece where it can uh, get access to the air inside the trailer and know what the temperature is and send that information back through uh, this wire to the control board and the control board makes a decision on when to turn the fan on and off based on the temperature now in order to con complete removing the control board all I have to do is take out uh, those three screws including that one then the board will loosen up and then I think I'll find a connector uh, that goes from the control panel on the other side of this uh, to the control board so let me take those screws out and then I'll pick up recording again in just a minute all right I finished removing those three screws and we can uh, turn the board upside down the control board and you can see that there is what's called a ribbon connector which plugs on to some pins that stick out of the bottom of the control board so now we have the control board completely separated from the plastic shroud and uh, so we're ready to take a look at the control board itself on the top side there's not a lot looks like uh, right there is a relay there's that connector that we were talking about these two devices are very likely uh, MOSFET power transistors 
they're probably the two transistors that supply power uh, to the actual fan motor and very likely the reason there is two is so that the fan motor can be reversed. That's a little beeper that uh, makes noise when the control board is working properly and you press the buttons uh, that little beeper makes a little beep. There's two connectors. One is an 8 conductor. That looks like it's probably for programming the microcontroller. And a 6 conductor. I don't know what that's for, unless that's for the remote control, which I don't have. There's an option on this uh, fan where you can have a remote control, and that may very well be where the receiver portion of the remote control plugs in. That'd be my guess anyway. Uh, if we finish looking at this side, you can see that the power input, these two wires are the main power coming into the board. Uh, there's a diode that protects against connecting the uh, polarity backwards, or actually doesn't keep you from connecting it backwards, it just prevents damage to the board if you do connect it backwards. Uh, then there's a capacitor. Um, I'm guessing that that's a voltage regulator, uh, probably to step this voltage down from 12 volts, probably down to 5 volts to power the microcontroller. Another capacitor, and that's a crystal, uh, which is usually used to provide a clock, not a clock to tell time with, but a clock to provide pulses to uh, control the microcontroller. Now there's a lot more stuff on the other side. And the brain, or the micro microcontroller, is right there. That's that connector that I told you that goes to the keypad. You can actually see that it's labeled keypad there. Uh, most of these little tiny components are tiny. That one, for example, those that are brown like that are capacitors, and these that have writing on them, most of those are resistors. This is called surface mount technology, uh, meaning that there are no holes that these components mount into. Uh, they're just soldered directly on pads on top of the printed circuit board. Same way with the microcontroller. You can see that each one of those pins is a separate lead. Uh, a couple of those at least will be for power. Uh, probably since there is a separate crystal over here. Yeah. Uh, the clock, there'll be two pins for the clock input to provide a, a pulse operation for the microcontroller. Um, and the rest of these are probably just to provide filtering and some signal. Uh, there are things called pull up and pull down resistors, which some of these things probably are. Uh, without a circuit schematic, I wouldn't be able to tell you what each one of these uh, devices do. I wish I had a circuit schematic. I also wish I had a copy of the software that is programmed into this microcontroller because that's where the problem exists. If what the guy told me at tech support is correct, and I think it probably is, the voltage that comes in here uh, comes from either the converter or if you're hooked up with your vehicle to your travel trailer, um, it may be voltage that's coming straight from the alternator in your car, in which case that voltage can go up as high as 14 and a half or maybe a little bit more than that volts. There are also things that occur called surges which push the voltage sometimes even higher than that. So I think probably what has happened here is that this input voltage right here uh, going through this regulator which is supposed to step it down to 5 volts probably there was a surge here. Um, it got through this regulator put excessive power on the microcontroller, and the microcontroller didn't just quit. It sort of, uh, to use a animal or human analogy, it just sort of lost its mind. And now it's, uh, it's not logical anymore. It's what you might call uh, crazy. This is soldered onto the board. If it was in a socket, it would be possible to replace this. Actually, it would be possible for me to replace it anyway because I know how to do a surface mount soldering, desoldering, and resoldering. So if I had a programmed microcontroller, I could probably fix uh, this board. But I don't, and uh, I don't. I can't get the software. Can't get a schematic. 
uh, they don't want to part with any of that stuff because they want to sell me uh, a replacement printed circuit board, which they did for uh, shipping and all, uh, just a little bit under $40. Quite honestly, uh, $40 is not too much for the board. Uh, it didn't certainly didn't cost them that much, but uh, if you buy replacement uh, printed circuit boards for electronic equipment, a lot of times you'll find them outrageously overpriced. And this one is not outrageously overpriced. Uh, $37, $39 is a fair price for it. I still wish I could have gotten some documentation for this board and repaired it myself as opposed to spending $40 uh, for a new one. Plus, I'd have gotten to learn something in the process. So, that's it. Uh, I'll get the new board out and show it to you, and we'll go from there.